Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Muggle Magic. Today we'll be making Hogwarts house banners and I've wanted to do these for a while. I decided to go with a transfer sheet. So this is basically, you could do this for a lot of things, not just banners, but you could also make like t-shirts this way and uh, other things. So anyways, I got this type of paper, this Avery uh, fabric transfers. Um, this is for dark fabric, basically any fabric that's not white. And I don't know what the difference is because I haven't used the other ones really, but yeah. Anyways, uh, go ahead and check out the description box below for a list of supplies you're gonna need, as well as the free downloadable templates, and let's get started. So for the templates, there are a couple of things. First of all, obviously we have the house crests. I'm using Hufflepuff in this example, but I have one for each. And then you're also gonna have this one, and this is on 11 by 17 paper and this is the shape of the banner, and we're gonna use this as a stencil when we cut our fabric. And I printed two of these out because I'm going to kind of uh, stack them and tape them together in the middle so that the banner is a bit taller. I wanted my banners to be a little taller. You could just use one though if you want. And the house crest is obviously printed on the transfer sheet. So we can go ahead and just take a pair of scissors and cut the banner out. Just make sure you stay in the uh, thick black border and don't leave any white around the edges because any white you leave around the edges will show up in the final uh, design when you transfer it over. So then your house crest should look a little something like this. The edges don't have to be perfect as long as there's no white around there. You're not really gonna be able to tell how perfect it is anyways once you transfer it to the cloth. And if you were wondering, this uh, I did print these on my inkjet printer at home because this paper is inkjet transfer paper. I don't know if there's a laser transfer paper. I haven't really looked into that because I don't have a laser printer. All of the uh, laser prints that I do, I have them printed somewhere. So uh, I just went ahead and I got inkjet transfer paper for this. So the next thing you wanna do here is just use your scissors and cut out the stencils for your banner shape. And this obviously, as you can see, it doesn't really need to be perfect. We just need to get these cut out. But if you want them to be perfect, you could use a ruler and X-Acto knife, but I'm not too worried about it because uh, the shape of this isn't going to matter a whole lot after we sew it. So here is our banner stencil. And again, if you want this to be taller, all you need to do is cut this second one out and then you're gonna stack them up like this and then just tape them together in the middle. But for this example, I'll just use the single one because it's easier to get in the shot. Now we need our fabric. I'm obviously going to use a yellow fabric for Hufflepuff. So what I've done is I've gotten a large piece of this yellow fabric and folded it over so that it, basically it's two layers. And now I'm going to take my stencil and put it on top. And the reason I'm doing two is because we're going to take the two pieces of cloth and then we're going to sew them together. And that's just going to make, give it a thicker look and make the edges look a lot better than if you just cut it out. So in order to get this right, I'm gonna take some safety pins and then we're just going to safety pin this stencil to the fabric just like this. And then you'll wanna put these safety pins all the way around the border. You probably only need maybe like one, two, three, three on along each side, maybe four, um, one or probably just one in the center here at the top, and then maybe one here and one here, and then you should be good. And once you have that done, you can use your scissors and then just cut around the stencil. After that's done, you can take your safety pins out and then you should have two identical uh, shapes from this stencil. And you can use this stencil over and over again for a while until you get like, you know, too many punctures along the side until it starts ripping or wrinkling. Then you probably just wanna make another one, but you can reuse it. Now from here, if you really don't wanna sew, you could just, you know, skip to the next step where we iron this on 
to the fabric and you could just have the rugged looking edges. But I wanted mine to, the edges to look a little better on mine, so I did sew them. So if you have a sewing machine, you can use a sewing machine. If you trust yourself to do it by hand, you can do it by hand. This is a lot easier with a sewing machine rather than doing it by hand because you can just run this through your sewing machine and be done in a few minutes. And if you're thinking my hands look a little feminine in this part, those aren't my hands. Those are my wife's hands. I am no good with a sewing machine um, or really sewing by hand. I can do it, but it just doesn't turn out good. And I just wasn't comfortable using the sewing machine, so I had her do this for me. So basically you just sew along uh, one of the long edges and then sew the uh, kind of forked bottom part and then sew up the other long edge and then what you want to do is flip the whole thing inside out afterwards and then just kind of fold the top parts in toward it on itself uh, toward the inside and then you can just sew right along the top part right there and it closes it up so now we have two pieces of fabric right here that are together, sort of like an empty pillowcase, only it's been sewn up on this side. And that's another thing. You could use this trans transfer paper to make a pillow. However, it might not be too comfortable to lay on because it doesn't really feel like a fabric once the, uh, the transfer's on here. So the next thing we want to do is iron this down because as you can see, it's it's kind of loose and a little bulgy. So we're going to iron this down to get it nice and flat. So in the instructions with the uh, paper, the transfer paper, it says not to use an ironing board. I'm not sure exactly why. It just says not to use one. So I'm going to follow the, the, uh, the instructions. And it said to just use a flat surface. So I'm going to use this table. And it says just to put a towel down. So that's what I'm going to do when transferring this. But of course, first we want to iron this out to get this as flat as possible. And you should just have to iron this maybe for a couple of minutes to get most of these wrinkles out. It doesn't have to be like completely wrinkle free. That would be almost impossible <laughs> for me anyways, because I don't really iron that much. Okay, I think this is good enough. I want to transfer this Hufflepuff uh, crest maybe to about right there. So you put it where you want. I, I want mine a little bit lower than half. I don't want it to be like right in the middle of the banner. I want it to be kind of lower on the banner. And so the transfer paper. The kind that I got, if you get the same kind, you basically just peel this back part off of it. Comes off in, in three parts. And then you place the uh, crest or the transfer image where you want it to be on the banner. And then it also comes with these pieces of like wax paper. So you wanna put the wax paper over the top and then you want to start ironing on top of the wax paper. Make sure you kind of get all the edges going vertically and horizontally like this. You want to get every part of this ironed down. And then after a minute or two of doing this, you can lift this up and then you can test by trying to um, lift up some of the edges here. And if the edges don't lift up, then the image has been transferred. And I mean, it doesn't, it wouldn't, it doesn't feel uncomfortable really. It just feels almost like a plastic sort of, I think, or like a, a rubber material rather than a cloth material. So that is what the banner should look like now. And as you can see, it's a pretty good sized uh, banner and um, you can hang this up for decoration for Halloween is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use this at my Halloween party I'm gonna have all four banners there um, but yeah you can just keep it and <laughs> hang it up in your in your room or in your house's decoration just anytime as for getting this up on the wall I'm probably just going to use uh, maybe just tacks up in the corner here just to hang it up that is how you make 
your own Hogwarts house banners. And I'm going to make, like I said, all four of these. So if you're interested in winning the house banners that I made in this video, as well as any of the houses, because I'm doing, like I said, all four houses, there are giveaway links in the description box below, uh, weekly giveaway links, and there's one for each house. So uh, you can make sure that you put your entry in for your Hogwarts house. Speaking of giveaways, it's time to announce the winner of the Fantastic Beasts Wanted posters from my previous giveaway. And the winner is Peyton Harwood. Congratulations, and I've sent you an email with instructions on how you can claim your prize. Remember, I get a lot of ideas for these DIYs that I do from your comments. So if you have an idea for something that you want to see me do in the future, definitely leave a comment below and let me know. If you're interested in seeing more DIY videos having to do with Harry Potter and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.